Well, hi, good morning. Thanks for joining me here in my shop. Today is May 12th, and what a nice day it is. And it took me a little bit of effort to come in here because the sun is a shining. There hasn't been much of that for the last week or so here. But here I am. So the plan is turn on the radio, see if it works, start aligning it. I'm all set up for doing the uh, a sweep alignment or checking the IF actually doing a sweep alignment to check it but I thought I wouldn't turn the radio on until the video was running so we could find out together if it still works today no reason why it shouldn't I uh, really got no antenna on it I'm ready to feed a, a signal into the grid of this tube let's switch it on we'll see we'll see what it does even if there's no signal for it to receive, um, no antenna and that, I think I can still figure out if it's working or not. Okay. I can always be the antenna. Let's see what we hear. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, I will now apply the antenna. Lots of volume, I'm sure it's working. Great, okay, so I'm now going to, even though the set hasn't warmed up yet, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a look at the uh, IF on here. Okay, uh, sweep level is very, very low right now, so I'm gonna hook this up. Probably we won't see anything on the scope at first. Well, I'll take that back. Okay, scope is not set right. Let me just turn the radio volume down here. Back here, I'm just gonna pad that. Turn the volume down. This guy should be on the XY setting, and that should be in the middle. I see a little dip there. Okay, well, I'm just gonna get rid of the uh, thumping. Turn up the input level. There we are, lovely. So I'm picking this off at the volume control. Uh, the shape of this curve may be affected a bit by the volume control. It's not it's not a beautiful balanced curve. It's got a little a little knee right here. And I don't know if you can really see it. Oddly enough, this part here is higher than this part. This is actually sloping downwards. It does that rises up and does the slope down again. Isn't that odd? Now that could just be could be ABC capacitor, could be could be other stuff. Who knows? I don't know. The question is can we can we verify that uh, that the alignment of the IF is good and on the right frequency. I'm gonna bring in another signal generator here. Uh, we'll use as a marker generator. I can just stick it right on where the other generator is too. Okay, so I'll put the ground up here. Output level is way too high. Let's put it way down. So now the signal I'm injecting is at uh, 620 kilohertz. It should be at 455 and then we should see something on there. But, but that shrunk quite a bit. Did it, did it shift left and right when I did that? Let me just disconnect here briefly and see. I think it just got smaller. Smaller's okay. So now I'll tune in this signal generator. Let's see there. And when it gets to around 455, we should see something going on over here. something going on right there. Now it's, it's not particularly visible in the camera I'm using so I'm going to set up another camera. Just bear with me for a moment here. Now one that will look right at the uh, of 
please bear, bear with me again while I go through the routine of bringing up the uh, dialog box here. So I can, I'm going to manually control the focus. Here we go. Okay, that, that's pretty good there. Now, first I'm going to take off the marker generator. You can just see if there's a frequency shift. So look where the the uh, the, the, the anti-peak is. I think it stayed pretty much in the same spot. See, it is drifting around a little bit, but that could be for various other reasons. Uh, I don't really care for the drift in it. Okay, so I'm going to increase the uh, sweep power a little bit. Okay, and now I'm going to bring across the marker generator, we can call it. There it is. And it's, not, it's not a nice little pip. It's, it's a funny squiggle. I'm trying to maximize it. Now see, it's on the left side. On the center gradual, I'll move it right to the right till it's right in, whoops went right past till it's right in the okay so I think now the marker generator is generating a frequency that matches the the anti-peak and what is it? Oh you gotta look at a different camera here to find out. And what is it? Okay so so uh, it's four fifty five. You can't get any closer than that. So the peak's in the right spot, but the shape is kind of weird. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move the marker out of the way here. I'm going to adjust the sweep until the point of the dip is right on the center gradual. There's a couple ways I can do this. Um, you know what I'm going to do it? I think I'm going to do it with this. I'm just going to put it right there so I can keep track of it. And we're going to make some adjustments in the IF transformers and uh, see if we can change the shape a little bit. Now, what does this do to the sound? I, honestly, I, I don't really know for sure. I really don't. But uh, you could assume a smoother curve means smoother arithmetic means less harmonics. Okay, so I just picked one of the four here, but kind of random. It's only going one way. What's going on here? There we go. Yeah, tool cams out in the other direction. Keep going. Yeah, this is not very good. Let me get a different tool here. I'm going to switch to the, the never to be used metal. First, I'm going to put it in and see if it influences the. Uh... No, doesn't seem to have any influence. Okay, I'm going to get it in the slot here. There we are. Now I can adjust this with much more control. So, now you look on the left. You can kind of tell the peak is sitting in on the left side of the curve now, and I'm going to bring it. This is tricky business because you've got four four different things in there at once. Why, why is it drifting off like that? Come back. Okay, I'm not going to go to the other transformer. I don't know if I'm doing any good here. And bear in mind, the shape may be more reflective of capacitors in the circuit. I don't really know. Now that's a much nicer looking shape. But we're in the wrong spot, so I'm going to move it. Not like that. Come on, stop drifting around like that. I wonder what that is. Let me just wrap the radio here a bit. Respond at all. What if I wrap my signal generator? Bump something there. Okay, we don't know why, but it's drifting slightly. Maybe it's even reflective of the uh, line voltage going up and down. Line voltage 116.9 uh, 
uh, 17.2, 16.9, 17.2, 0.1. I don't know. That's a tiny fluctuation. I wasn't looking up, of course, to see if it correlated. That's a tiny amount. Well, I'm concentrating on the shape, mostly. I keep going here. So I'm kind of switching now to the... Uh, or did I switch? I, n I never did the top of the other. Okay. Top of the other transformer. A little sensitivity to the tool there. Remember, there's a slight delay. Okay, here we go. Way over to the right. Now that, no, that's a nice looking curve there, but it's it's lost its peak. Like its peak has gotten too dull. Okay. Um, and again, I don't really know if I'm doing any beneficial stuff here, but it's kind of fun in a way. Oh, now I'm going to stick a screwdriver into the back of this radio here. I don't want to do it in the dark. Oh boy. Uh, I'm going to try the, uh, I don't want to stick a metal screwdriver up in there. Okay, first, first one. I went right in, here we go. Down. Again, my, uh, my, the tool I'm using just, okay, this one I'm going to stick the metal screwdriver in. Did, uh, I wasn't looking at the scope, let me just wiggle it around a bit. Oh, didn't seem to bother it too much. Okay, I'm in. You can see that one's just swinging right back and forth. Okay, we'll stick it right on there. The curve's looking like a nice curve now. Sort of. The last one. Okay, the last one is where I don't want to stick the metal screwdriver. Okay. Put the plastic one in. We're in. Here we go. Oh, look at the difference that makes. Well, again, not to get too hung up on the shape, but just having some fun. Well, that's a lovely shape there. I like it. Right on the middle. Why don't we swing in the uh, 455 again? And just and this time you can see it very clearly. Say it's right there. That would be right on the money. Ooh, get a different frequency now. 452, not 455. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's set this to 455 then, and see what happens. How different is that? It should be to the right just just a wee bit. Can I can I do that? Can I move all four of these guys to the right a little bit? Let's see what happens. Why not? Here we go. First one. Trying to go to the right. Wait a minute, let's get rid of this side. Zigzaggy stuff. Okay, so I think that went to the right. Oh, that's to the right, that's to the left. Okay, so this is to the right. I almost have to use your imagination of what's going on in this curve. Four things overlapping. This one, to the left, okay, to the right. getting weaker because they're not all aligned anymore. And I'll put this one down here. Okay, we're ready. We should, should start getting bigger over to the right here now. Hmm. Odd shape. Okay, there's only one more left. To try to make this thing look like a nice curve again. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, how did it move? <laughs> Bring back the uh, marker. Okay, that would be right there. And the frequency now, 454, I got it. 455, excellent. Okay, move that off. Probably the impact on the operation of the radio was almost nil on all that. But, uh, hey, every time I get a chance to do an alignment of an IF, I think I get just a little wee bit better at it. Teeny tiny wee bit better. Now, there's another step here, which is to uh, set up the uh, trap for 455. So we'll keep this running at 4, 455. Aerial and ground via dummy antenna. Everything else is left the same. Iron dust core of L1 for minimum output. This is very really important because I have so many radios operating simultaneously, all of them with their local oscillators screaming away. So if I can use a trap to, to, to reduce the in and out of one of those radios, that's good. This one has a trap. Let's make use of it. L1, and L1 is located where? L1. It's one of these. Oh my gosh. That's L2. I don't know where L1 is. L1 is shown here as it would be on the single plate. There it is. L1, right, right there. Now we have to relate this diagram to the radio. <laughs> uh -huh. L1. So this radio has a plate with two sets of coils and a plate with one set of coils. And that's how you tell them apart here. These two are one plate with two sets of coils. So we're on the single plate. Where, where are we? L1. L1 is on the single plate. This guy is coming in from the top here. So one, one adjustment made from the top. There's four coils across the top. That matches. At three in lower, yes, definitely. So I definitely got myself oriented right. That's L1 right there. Let me take time and write all these on the back of this radio like I did with the other similar radio. L1. Okay, L1, I'll just, I'll remember it. Oh, bottom corner, how can I forget that? So now we gotta feed 455 into the antenna. varied this frequency. That thumping went up and down. Is that true? It, it's very hard to tell, but it actually gets a wee bit louder when, uh, when we're on the money. I don't know what it means, but it's just another observation here. Okay, so we're, we're feeding 455 low signal into the antenna. And we want to try to hear it. use L1 to try to snuff that out. Okay, let's go snuffing. That's a bad sign. It didn't do anything. That's a sign that I'm not on L1. Can I get this to 
totally backwards is L1 up here. What happened? Can't afford to make mistakes here like this. So I got this up here. This piece is actually right in here. And then I have four across the top. One of them looks a little different. It doesn't look any different. There's four across the top. They're showing this, this piece here as if you can figure something out from it. Um, yeah, four across the top of L1 is not up here, it's down here. I did have it wrong. So I certainly buggered up some other... Uh, uh, buggered something else up. Shame on me. But this is the whole deal with doing alignment. How many times have I said, first time through, you just write it off to education. So. This one. Oh, come on. Come on, come on. Definitely says L1 there. L1, L5, L4, L2. Where's L3? Is that a poorly written 3? Is there another L1 in here somewhere? L1. Well, the only place that L1 could occur would be in this group because of the numbering. But there's no L3. There's an L2. C3. L4. Did they do that? Did they do it in order? C22. Well, there's, there's no way there's 22 capacitors like this, so that's what they've done. They've numbered them in the order of the operation, probably. So you're probably going 1, 2, 3. You're probably doing them like that. 4, 5, that's, that, 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 no, who knows. So that's L1. Why didn't it do anything? It's on the far side from up here. To hold this like this. It's the lower the lower one back here. Did I, did I not do that? <laughs> Is it making a difference and I'm just not noticing it? Wow, this is just not working out at all. Let's think for a minute. We're listening to the speaker. So we're definitely hearing what's going through the radio. We're pumping the IF past the trap, past the, everything into the radio. trying to trap it out. It's not working. This uh, trap only work on the other antenna. Where is this trap located on the, on the schematic? Um, so I should be. No, what would it matter? I'm not feeding any signals. I am. I'm feeding this one in the antenna. That's right. That's what you're supposed to do. Oh, between aerial and ground leads. Okay, uh, it's a little vague, but this could be aerial and ground, but I think this is aerial and ground that they're talking about. I've got it onto the chassis. What difference can that make? Okay, I put it in 
that way. So there are some components on this negative one here or a ground one. Let's try again. Iron dust core of L1 for minimum output. L1 at the back, at the bottom. Okay, listening again. See what's going on with the AVC voltage here. This is the AVC voltage. I'm going to get a thing. Nothing coming through. What have I done wrong here? Have the ground connected and the voltmeter connected. Nothing at all. Like a dead zero? There's nothing in this radio that should be a dead zero like that. What's happened? What happened here? Okay, we'll take the scope off. Oh! oh. Okay. Let's think about this. Think about it. Think about it. That's the scope connection. The scope connection to the volume control input drain that much out of it? I'm on the times one here. Wow! Let's just listen to that again. Times one. Deadly. I should have this probably on the times ten. Yeah. Uh, did that affect anything? <laughs> did that affect anything? You know, it could have. You know, I did all that fooling around with some meters to study the input impedance. I never really paid a lot of attention to my oscilloscope. And it's not so much the oscilloscope anyway. It could be this lead that I'm using has some picofarads in it that uh, are interfering. Okay, so we got to go back and look at the scope deal again. Okay, let's do that. The scope deal. connected anymore. Oh, son of a god. Okay. A little capacitor here. Let's go back and check. Don't want to make any assumptions. I'm going to put this on the grid. How noisy is that? I make a pretty good antenna up there. Okay. I'm going to put the signal generator on there. There you go, have it. What's, what's the matter? Scope. Why is the scope not showing? Because the scope is set on times 10. If I put it on times 1. Okay, let me make this more sensitive. Oh, I can just barely see it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to jack up the signal input level. Let me turn the volume down on this because. see that there's what the scope shows now so that's a sensitive is it no make it a little more sensitive uh, looks pretty much the same I'm gonna have to swing through the uh, marker I think I could just do it right into the antenna here oh you know what it's there now let me turn this up you have an alternative way to try to uh, adjust that uh, trap also. So, marker generator 455 looks like it's right, right in there. Beautiful. Everything's perfect. That didn't affect it at all. And now I'll make that adjustment. See if we can uh, try to reduce the amount of this stuff going on by trapping the signal that's causing it. into what I'm pretty sure is L1. Okay, here we go. Turn the 
turning it rapidly. I didn't see the slightest change. Nothing at all. Nothing whatsoever. Wow! Don't like that. Well, the bottom line is uh, the IF is tuned well, and we should carry on. I think that's what we should do here. So, disconnect the scope. Weird sound. So we still got to work on this audio deal here to make it work a little better, but for now, Back to back to feeding into the antenna. That no, still is feeding in the antenna. We take off this guy here. There we go. And we're hearing that other signal generator now. Doing 455 right from the antenna. Coming out the speaker, clear as a bell. We still have no ABC voltage showing up here. What's going on? Let's salt. Let's get this guy straightened out. Okay, we don't need this on there. We need this one. It's there. Hey meter. Hey meter, what's happened to you? Okay, let's go look. Slight variation there. Why is the meter not going up at all? We'll put it on plus and we'll check against the D plus voltage here. Where I can pick it up. The meter's certainly working. Minus 1.5 volts. It was just not the frequency which is supposed to be knocked out. We can hear it, we should see it. If we can hear it on the speaker, we should see it on that meter. Okay, I'm gonna jack this up. Oh, did you see that? I must not be in the best spot to pick this up. Maybe on the other side of uh Um, where was I getting the B plus before? Or not B plus. I'm going to stop for a minute, calm myself down, and get focused on uh, getting that meter to work. Okay, so check the schematic and saw that uh, there's no way DC can make it to that volume control. So I just backed up the circuit a little bit and put this green clip lead on. Presto negative voltage there. Pretty sure that's AVC. <laughs> Let me vary the input level of the signal we're, we're monitoring there. Yeah, you can see it go up and down. Okay. Now, back to what we're trying to do, which is... Uh, actually, you know, I should really knock this down a little bit here. That voltage we're going to try to make smaller. With this trap. So it's just making no difference. Wow. That's really saying something is wrong now. Would you believe I found a radio with uh, incorrectly? labeled coils didn't, didn't that happen or did that was that a moment in time and I found out I was wrong in the end I had a radio with in, incorrectly lit bands on the front so when you switch to you know band 3 electronically it was band 3 
but on the front it was lighting up band 5. You want to see something confusing there. Now, how did that mistake ever get made? Or am I misremembering that too? Ooh. Uh, I can't imagine. I'm not going to go on the basis that they've made some kind of mistake here in this in this diagram. But it's just something I'm not getting. It's got to be it's got to be something I'm not getting. These are the two double plates. And that's this the double plate. This is the single plate with L1 written on it. Coils are facing this way. They're showing. Uh, I don't know what this what this ring is supposed to be. This is the actual. This is the actual switch wafer with its support screws. You can kind of see it right here. And so down there, there should be some capacitor. Yeah, there. You know, you're not gonna be able to see it probably. Oh, you can see it. There's a capacitor down there. Okay. I mean, there's no question I've got the right one. Is, is it possible I'm looking, if I'm looking, if they aren't showing them, if they're showing them from the back, what would happen then? That would put these three and these two on the top, but they're not. There's there's four there, four there. It's got to be this way. It's got to be L1. It's got to be L1. Was I just going? Have I just been going into the? No. Have I just been going in the wrong one every time I stick it in here? No, I'm in the right one here. The only one. Well, I don't know what to say about it. Here we go again. You're watching over here. Can you make a difference? There's absolutely no difference whatsoever. Now, I couldn't find L3 in here. Does L3 referred to anywhere? I don't think so. Then they, they changed it to C. Remember remember that? Remember that, Jim? <laughs> well, there's a C1. How can there be an L1? Is there another L1 showing up somewhere? I don't think so. Uh, so, where in the instructions do they say L3. Where do they say L3 here? T2, T1, L1, L25, L2, 22, and 3. So much for the, uh, the, the numbering of this is the order. 24, 17, 10, 9, 33, 16, 15, 22. Did we do 22? No, we didn't. 22. L8. 21, 14, 7, 30, 13, 6, 19, 13, 5, 18, 11, and 4. But you never saw L3 in here anywhere. But there's an L22 and a C22. Hey, what's the radio doing? I have to reach the unfortunate conclusion that L1 doesn't work. It's kind, of, it's kind of nonsensical. I really don't want to go past this because maybe the L1 I think I'm doing here is actually something else. Maybe there's an error in here. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But I want to get this right. Uh, okay, I'm going to stop and study the schematic a little bit here. So usually they put uh, traps right on right at the door. Here's the door and L1. There's the trap right on the antenna. Uh, not on this antenna. Just on this one. That's the one I'm feeding the signal into. So it's feeding the signal right into this trap. And yet it seems to be going by and tuning this doesn't do anything. Now that implicates open or C1 is shot. What is C1? C, C1. 85 picofarads plus or minus 1%. So 
So maybe what's happened is this guy's not 85 anymore, and I'm trapping a different frequency. Then I can't get to 455. 85 picofarads on this capacitor. I think we can find this in the radio. Where that, maybe maybe that's easy to get to. C1. Okay, let's go look for that. Uh, in many cases, I would just skip this entirely because you know it's not a very critical element in the operation of the radio. But since I operate multiple radios simultaneously, all sharing the same antenna, shame on me. Each one's local oscillator is feeding into the other. So it can be quite an exercise sometimes uh, operating multiple radios simultaneously on the same antenna. And what was I doing? Son of a gun. Yeah, I've been in here too long. I'm thinking too much about going outside. I wanted to find that capacitor. And the capacitor I wanted to find is C1. I mean, it's C number one. C number one, so it's probably in this area. I bet you it's that thing right there. Let's see. Let's see, oh boy. Yeah, there's another uh, shot of the uh, coil arrangements there. There's L1 shown there. Um, so I don't know what they're doing with this diagram because there's uh, they're showing like three coils here. L1, 7, and 6. Well, there's two more coils above it. They don't seem to show them here. So I don't know what they're doing with this diagram. And we're looking for C1. There it is. C1 tucked, tucked in here. C1. Can, yeah, can, can we see that one? Yeah, look, here's the shaft. Just look right below the shaft. You should see. There's also, looks like C2 something or other written there. Maybe two capacitors right in there. Right below the center shaft. What do we see here? Okay, so there certainly is something there. Give me a good pointer. So we're going to diagram now. C1 is right here. C1 should be right there. Right there. That's probably C1. There's that, and there's a white, a white guy way at the back there. I'm never going to get in there to change that. And, uh, can I see if they're connected? They're supposed to be uh, just in series with that coil. I literally see a connection to the coil. Here, here's one coil. Well, that's not the right coil. The right coil's down here. You know what? This wire could well be going down there. Can't see it. Those capacitors are tucked right around the back. They're inaccessible. And uh, trying to do something with them. Yikes. It would be almost suicidal to try to do something in there. Uh, I dropped this whole plate out. I mean, it's all for what? If it were something a little more important, I might go further. But I think I'm going to have to just abandon the uh, the uh, the trap. Yeah, I'm going to skip that for now. And uh, I'm going to get through the first shortwave band. Let's see what else it says here. No, let's finish off the broadcast band. I don't have a broadcast band antenna on here. Uh, I was thinking about giving it one that I have. I gotta go looking. Gotta go looking. Okay, so I've decided I will commit this antenna to this radio. Now, this this is actually what's well, from another radio, obviously. This guy is a has two loops. 
Okay, yeah, most of these turns are in one loop. And then there's one more turn on the outside. And that's why there's one, two, three, four different terminals on this guy. Four, four, four terminals. So we don't want the outside loop. I want the, the inside loop with all the turns. Now that guy, one wire's clearly here. Goes to this, goes to, no. Goes to this terminal. And then the other wire, this is an outside wire, this is an outside wire, that's for the single loop. This is the other inside wire. These two terminals connect to the bulk of this. I'm going to commit this antenna to this radio and we'll see what happens. I may even just solder it on up here. We'll move from there. It's, at least it's something. Uh, the, uh, at least it's something. Should I solder it right on there and have it just hanging there? It's probably the most trouble-free way of doing this. I could also, uh, no, I was just saying, I could take these wires, let it hang from these wires. Clip lead. Let's clip lead. Clip leads. <laughs> clip lead, that's the way. Now, every time I've tried to use the uh, broadcast band antenna connection here, which I'm doing now, it has failed to operate. As, as if it's failing, as if it appears as if it fails to operate. So let's do a little experimenting. Okay, we're going to stop feeding in 455. We'll stop feeding in. We're going to feed in. I'm going to hook this to another loop. Just pick this little loop of wire here. We'll turn this into a radio station. Hang this in some non-critical location. So tangled up. There we go. There we are. That's the non-critical location. And so we're going to want to put a regular radio signal through here. Uh, I'm make it. Uh, let's try. I li always like a million. Let's try a million. One million. A million hertz heading into that, into this loop, into this, into this loop. Put a little, I'll find it. Now we're going to try to find it on this radio. Wow, it's never sound bad. Eh? That's because it has no antenna. Sounds like it's broken down again, but it's not. Okay, with the antenna partially connected, can we find the uh, signal? Should be right up in this area. The answer would be no. I'm going to hook this temporarily onto the other antenna because we know we can get stuff. Well, you know what? That's on the ground side of that thing. That's okay. We'll do this. Find it. Wow, this is receiving like crazy. It's just not receiving what I want it to receive. Wow, this sounds great. <laughs> to tell you. Okay, we'll pick a quiet spot. What, what appears to be a quiet spot, yeah, if you watch the ABC meter, It'll verify it's not picking up a signal. Because you can tune in an unmodulated signal and have, have a powerful signal on a radio and not know it. That's not the case. Now we will mess around with this guy until we hear it. And where is he roughly tuned? Somewhere in the middle, probably a little higher than this. Let's go up from here. Let's give it, give it, give it the works. Okay, so that's the uh, limit of my generator. I'm going to tune the radio higher. Okay. A quiet spot. Right there. Okay, this is probably around 12 or 13 or something. Oh, that's a really uh, 
very ineffective way of doing this. Okay, let's put the signal generator straight on. Straight on. Straight on. Let's put it closer. antenna onto the radio the way it should be. I can hear it. Actually sounds a little better. I'll put the other, so it's not just a single wire thing happening. Let's put this. Went quiet. Well, I would imagine any other radio connected like this that's receiving properly would be barking out, just blasting out a signal out of the speaker. It wouldn't sound like this at all. There's really something quite seriously wrong up here. So, uh, but under this arrangement, uh, I think I can go forward. as crazy as it seems. So what would be next? Tune 550, set the radio to 94.5, adjust two cores. So we'll go to 550, 94.5. Now the 94.5 they're referring to is on this uh, scale on the back. in the radio there. 94.5 is almost at the top. What's the action there? You shouldn't hear that. That sounds louder, doesn't it? This radio is aligned on its uh, aligned on its image. Maybe that's what happened here. So 94 using the top of the bracket, which is what they say you're supposed to use. 94 would be you know, right there. So the radio should now be tuned for 550. Is that what it said? 550. Oh yeah? I, I doubt it. Okay, now what's that? So I'm pounding quite a, quite a strong signal here. 550. Oh, that was the IF going by. What is this, this radio? It's a good receiver. It receives everything everywhere. Five fifty, right? Five fifty. Okay, maybe we're going to leave it right around here uh, because something is way out of whack in this radio. Way out of whack. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll pursue this starting tomorrow, I think. Well, that's great. Well, thanks for watching so far. It's been crazy, been a crazy time. You know, I kind of have this idea in my head that these radios should, you know, after you tune them up and that, they should. Should, should should kind of work in the way you would expect but that's never the case <laughs> there's always there's always some weird uh, thing going on so anyway thanks a lot for watching and uh, i'm off to enjoy the sunshine today and be outside all day with my cats see ya